Shalom, you all. What a crazy time we live in. Amazing. See, for, for, for decades now, we, we've been hearing that we are in the end times. So much so that the topic of eschatology isn't taken very seriously anymore. It is true that even Yeshua spoke of the last days during his short ministry on earth. And his audience might have also thought that they were around the corner. By the way, uh, don't forget to subscribe, give us the thumbs up and the notification uh, bell as well. Uh, it does make a difference. So looking at, you know, the topic of the end times, you know, fast forward to today, the 2024, and we are still talking about the last days. What has changed, if anything? Biblically speaking, many, including myself, believe that the next event on the prophetic calendar is the rapture of the believers. It will be a signless event, meaning that nothing needs to precede it as a sign of its soon occurrence. It is also known as an imminent event. Same thing. Yeshua will come to get us, and I quote, like a thief in the night, close quote, as we can read in 1 Thessalonians 5.2. Once the rapture takes place, the Antichrist will sign a pseudo-peace treaty with Israel, according to Daniel 9.27, and that will start the period of turmoil known as the time of Jacob's trouble, also known as the Great Tribulation, Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Regarding that specific time in history that takes place after the rapture, uh, people start looking at the rest of the events and really disagree on the timing of all the events. Questions are asked, like when will the Ezekiel 38 war of Gog and Magog take place? What about the destruction of Damascus? Is the Psalm 83 war a real war? Could it happen soon? Are we in the middle of it now? Don't forget the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel chapter 37. For a while now, I've been convinced that the only end times prophecy that we can claim with certainty is happening in front of our eyes is the return of the Jewish people to Israel in unbelief. That is an event spoken of in Ezekiel 36. Spoiler alert! Ezekiel 36 comes before 37, the Valley of Dry Bones, and 38, Gog and Magog. So friends, it is well worth our time to look at a few critical verses in Ezekiel 36, 24 through 29. And I quote, And it will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your own land. Then it will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to do my judgments and you will inhabit the land that I gave to you, your fathers so you will be my people and I will be your God. Close quote. Wow. What an incredible promise from the God of Israel. None of it could happen without the birth of the modern state of Israel in 1948. That was the only prerequisite. Israel had to, uh, has been in, in a diaspora since AD 70 when the destruction of the temple by the Romans took place. It's been a while. Jewish people can still be found from all over the globe, everywhere. While the Jewish diaspora went unnoticed by most, it's interesting to note that Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, a uh, school that I attended a few decades ago now, uh, caught the vision and started a Jewish study program to train pastors and workers to share the good news of Yeshua with the Jewish people. Here's what's amazing. The year was 1922, 26 years before the rebirth of Israel in 1948. They believed that the Jewish people would indeed return to the land of Eretz Israel in unbelief. They were so right. Ezekiel 36 tells us four things. First, God will take the Jews from the nations, which means that the Jews will come from the, the diaspora that started almost 2,000 years, 2000 years ago. That's where we are right now. Next, God will gather you from all the lands, it says, 
which means that the regathering is not a fluke of history, but very much part of the prophetic plan of God for the end times. No doubt about that. Then God tells the Jewish people that he will bring you into your own land. In the text, it says that. For that to be possible, the land has to exist. Israel has to exist. And that started, as I just said, on May 14, 1948. The final event developed further in the prophecy of the Valley of the Dry Bones in chapter 37 of Ezekiel is that Israel will be cleansed and given a new heart. This means, friends, total regeneration by God. What an amazing time. The point here is that none of that can happen until the Jewish people are in Ritz Israel. About half the Jewish people are still in the diaspora, and the vast majority have established roots, invested in property, and built lives wherever they are, like my family and friends. Making Aliyah is not quite yet in the heart of all Jews around the world. But is it possible that God is allowing things to change so that Jewish people would move faster back to the land of Israel? I believe it is, and this is why. Three reasons. The Labour Party elected in the United Kingdom. Recently, the United Kingdom had elections and the Labour Party took power. It took control. This is the party of anti-Semite Jeremy Corbyn. It, had, it, it has a, a reputation of being pro-Palestinian, which unfortunately always comes with an anti-Israel position, while the opposite, being pro-Israel, is seldom looking at being anti-Palestinian. But that's for another day. This is giving regular anti-Semites the additional boldness they needed to be more open about their Jew hatred, like in the recent case of an Airbnb canceled because the renter was an Israeli citizen and the owner was a Muslim who declared that they couldn't, and I quote, support what was taking place against the people of Gaza, close quote. Then you have the left elected in France as well. In an unprecedented upset, Friends gave power to the left and the far left when all believed that the far right party of Marine Le Pen would win. This was, this was a shock. The anti Semitism spewed from the French far left is not even cloaked in anything else. Their leader, Jean Luc Mélenchon, is openly anti Semitic. To stop the far left, which they falsely painted as being a revival of the 1930s Vichy government, France elected the far left. I meant to stop the far right, sorry. France elected the far left, putting the third largest Jewish community in the world at significant risk for their lives. Now, it is true that Le Pen's party is not the greatest friend of the Jews, but they are quite removed from the diatribes of her dad, Jean-Marie Le Pen, and definitely not a repeat of the Vichy government. Now, after the results were published, Rabbi Moshe Sabag from the Grand Synagogue of Paris said this, and I quote, France has no future for Jews, close quote. Incidentally, friends, over 2,000 French Jewish families have opened fast to make Aliyah uh, in the last three to four days to return to Israel. It's happening really fast. Far left is also pushing uh, anti-Israel agenda in the USA. Now, it's, it's, it's clear, it's evident that since October 7, 2023, the uh, terrorist attack uh, by uh, Hamas in Israel, the far left has promoted the Palestinian narrative, in a sense, the pro-Hamas narrative. The campus intifada is in violent street protest, protest in, in, in favor of, of the terrorist group Hamas have been off the chart, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free, and all that nonsense. It seems that the enemies of Israel and America have been given carte blanche, complete in whatever they want to do, with no fear of legal retaliations. It's just, it's just amazing how much is happening right now. And the rest of the world does not look much more favorable either. Now, while God never has and never will condone anti-Semitism, that's, that's clear, the Bible is replete with examples of him allowing other people groups to interact with Israel and forcing Jewish people into decisions that they would have not made otherwise because of being comfortable in wherever they are. Look at these people that have uh, been uh, utilized by God to make Jewish people 
uh, move. The Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans, and, and many more. The Bible is full of those examples. Now, this is what I think. These changing governments might become the catalyst to the fulfillment of the Jewish return of the, is the, uh, the return to Israel in unbelief, according to uh, Ezekiel, in preparation for the final chapter of human history and the final salvation of Israel. That's that's what I think is happening. Now, just remember that God, when God allows something, it's very different than God condoning something. Let's let's make that clear. But my people need Yeshua more than ever. And while the 144,000 Jewish men of the tribulation will play a huge part towards that goal, we are not there yet, not even close. And God wants to utilize you and me right now. So let's get busy. Let's make a difference for the kingdom of God. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We need you. We need your prayers. We need your partnership. We need your support. If you want to support our ministry, we need it right now more than ever to make a difference. So visit shalomandmessiah.com and click the donate button on the top right or also connect with us with all the things you can get from us for free. But please consider making a donation right now to help us with this ministry. Thank you for watching. Shalom and until next time, be blessed.